Um, we will see indeed. One thing we really need to see is what in the heck is going on with Inter Miami. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned earlier, they are bottom of the East. They are in the they're in the lead for the wooden spoon. Well in the lead for the wooden spoon. Well in the lead with one point that is half of the amount of points that our good friend San Jose have. Mm -hmm. Um, zero wins, four losses and a tie, three goals scored, 13 goals against, minus 10 differential. Uh, Iguain scored one of their three from a penalty yesterday. He scored a penalty against Cincinnati. They scored, they scored one from open play against Austin. And against Cincinnati, it was a pen. Yeah. It was a they pen. scored one so goal from open they've play. They've scored one goal from open play, <laughs> which is terrifying considering that you're playing with Higuain and Leo Campagna up top. What in the world do they need to fix? Everything. I mean, this team. <laughs> let's, let's stay away from the, uh, the FCC answer of everybody's a dumpster fire replace the team because well, I mean, wildly I mean, that's... enough they've tried that <laughs> this yeah, year that's true. how's they, it work they, so i feel like they are following the exact mold of fcc except one they cheated uh two <laughs> they spent more money than fcc on some more like high profile they went the retirement league route basically um but otherwise yeah i feel like they were I, to be honest, I don't want to say they were bad the first season, but they still made the play in game. I mean, they weren't the worst team, obviously, but they've just consistently have gotten worse. And I, I genuinely think with the emergence of Brandon Vasquez this season, that inner Miami is destined for the wooden spoon. I mean, this team is they were bad to begin with. We knew that. And then they got hit with all these penalties because they cheated. And we're still bad, by the way, <laughs> which is hilarious. Uh, so this team is going to be awful. And I'm honestly not surprised because look at this team on paper. They're terrible. I know they tried to, like, redo everything and bring in all these players. But did they really bring in players that were that much better? I don't really feel like they did. So what you're saying is they probably should have gone and pulled players out of retirement. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we need more Ray Gattis. <laughs> So here's what I've noticed. Uh -huh. Over five games, they've played three different goalkeepers. And it looks like... Hold on one sec. They've gone three different goalkeepers, three different formations. So they still don't have a firm idea of what they are, which is okay. They've literally redone their entire team. But compare it to a, a team like Charlotte that has literally put their squad together from day one. And every time they go out, you look at them and you're like, okay, I know what this team is. I know what they want to do. I have no idea what this team wants to do. They want to lose. Um, <laughs> they, DeAndre Yedlin, okay. They're back three of McVeigh, Lowe, and Quinteros on paper, okay. In reality, it's not. Not yeah, okay. In reality, it's not there. They've got a middle three. Their biggest killer right now, to me, is Mo Adams starting in midfield. Mo Adams has now all, appeared in all five games, is a 6.3 rating, and is just not getting the job done. You've got players like um, uh, Duke, Bryce Duke from – LAFC on the bench, who has not made a single appearance. You've got Robbie Robinson, who's got two appearances. And I believe only one of them is a start. You're playing Noah Allen. And again, this, this is Noah Allen over Breck Shea. And he's been not great. Again, he's 17, right? You're throwing a kid into the fire who might not be ready to do it yet. Well, he had to play because Breck Shea was on a red card. No, but he started the season. Oh, he started the season. Yeah. Robert Taylor's been one of their most 
prolific players, in my opinion. I've enjoyed watching him play. He's very much like the Lewis Morgan of this year. But he's playing as a center mid, and he's naturally a wing player. So the shape doesn't match up. They're, all three of their goalkeepers have been awful. Clement Diop has been good. Marsman had a rough game yesterday. Drake Callender, we understand, had a very rough game against FCC. Kieran Gibbs is nowhere to be found. Ari Lasseter is nowhere near what he was with Houston three years ago. And then you've got Penn Merchant, Gonzalo Higuain, Gregory trying to just hold everything together from the center of midfield, and Damian Lowe, who's just clearing 900 balls a game. I think what this team needs is an identity. First and foremost, what do you want to be, whether it be a counterattack team, a high-pressing team, possession team, whatever it may be, you need to stick to that identity. From there, you need to get the players around it. I think what they did was they went ahead and redid the whole roster without any idea of what they wanted to build. Because if if they were trying to rebuild to be a a counterattack, high-pressing team, fine but you're missing you know you're missing the shape isn't right to do that campania is pretty good at being a, a good counterattack, get in behind stretch the lines higuain's playing more as a number 10 now so he's trying to link up the play and as he gets older which again fine but now you're basically going a three six one if you're playing with three in the back or you're going a four five one or you're going with a false nine as Gonzalo Higuain drops into the, into the center of midfield. So you're, you're taking away your biggest goal scoring threat and doing what with it? Every time you watch into Miami, it's just, it's killing me because I just don't get what they are. They're a bad team. That's what they are. I think the players on this team have the ability to be better than they are. No, this, this is not a team that's competing for anything in this league. I, and you can't tell me otherwise. I mean, this team clicking as, as best as they can, maybe, maybe challenges for the playoffs at best. And I'm not, I'm not saying they're world beaters, but I'm not, I'm, what I'm saying is they are not minus 10 goal differential one goal from open play, 13 goals against in five games. That's not what this team is. I think think they absolutely are. (laughs) No way. Robbie Robinson is better than that. Do we know that? Yes. Gregory is better than that. Gregory is so much better than that. He can't do everything himself. He can't, but he's surrounded by players who will make... I, I I, I think Robbie Robinson has the potential, but for one... They haven't backed him enough. And two, he hasn't shown enough that I can say that with certainty. I know he was stronger last season, but he still only has four goals in almost 2,000 minutes in his career. And I, I think some of that is the product of the team that's around him. But it just these, the team doesn't click well together. And the team is just not good either, which doesn't help. Listen, there's nothing that makes me happier than watching a team that cheated the rules and very knowingly cheated the rules look like garbage. It makes me smile. But is it good for the league that the only person that is always associated with the biggest change in MLS owns a team that's at the bottom of the league? That's his own fault. He didn't it absolutely, team well. is. absolutely is. But so that, that's the only reason I'm advocating for this. If this was a random person who owned this team and I had nothing, you know, absolutely enjoy the bottom of the league, be the next FCC. I don't care, but I feel like this team, again, we talk about how much impact that a a team with notoriety can have on the U S soccer structure and the, and the, the narrative around what we do in this league when it comes to football. I just don't know if it's the right, I don't know if the, the, the best thing for us right now is to have them not be good. Oh, it, again, it's, it's a product of their own doing. They, You're right. We, we can't players. change it. 
we can't change it. We, I mean, Donnie Garbs can go on out there and make the David Beckham 2.0 rule and give David Beckham unlimited money and do whatever he wants. And they would probably still suck. I, I mean, look at, think they look, suck. At their, look at their signings. They brought, they brought in Matuidi Iguain, who outside of Iguain's penalties, he's been okay. Matuidi was garbage. Um, they brought in Kieran Gibbs, who hasn't done anything. They brought Ryan Shawcross basically out of retirement to bring him into do nothing. They brought, I think he played like seven games. Yeah, they, they brought in DeAndre Yedlin, who is like on the end part of his career. I know he's only 28, but like his career was clearly on a downward spiral, and they brought him in, I, I guess, looking to revive it. They, I mean, they, they've they just, they've built this team horrifically. This is a bad team. They they brought in, they just, they haven't done a good job. I mean, they, they failed on their first DP signing with Pizarro, who was supposed to be a big name for them. And they, I was they, just about to say, you know, who they're really a, missing right now is somebody who created like Pizarro. Yeah. I mean, that was a swing and a miss. I think the talent was there. They just used them horribly. You had one bright spot on this team and you traded him away for what ended up being looking like pennies basically based on this offseason go on keep 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 telling me about that (laughs) keep telling me about that after seeing are you saying that they they basically sold him for way less so it wasn't an overpay after seeing what they paid for paul Ariola, then yes they absolutely sold him for way less than they should have (sighs) i mean this team is run horrifically they arguably this team has run worse than FCC because I feel like FCC do not have the, the reputation and resources that this team has. And yet FCC is still, at least I feel like looking in a better direction than this team, which is shocking to say, because that FCC team looks horrible on paper, at least. Stop it. Brandon Vasquez is carrying that team where? To the moon. To the moon, baby. Except his defense is trying to drag him back to earth. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Jeff Cameron, okay? We're just not. We could talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> Here is my question for you as we try and wrap this up. Okay. How much longer does Gary Neville, Phil Neville, whichever Neville it is, have? I know, I know it's Phil. I think it's Phil. I think it's Phil, too. I'm pretty sure it's Phil. <laughs> Good thing we know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how irrelevant they are. It is Phil. It's Phil. Yes, it is. How Phil. much? How much longer does he have in charge before he gets? How the much sack? longer before you kick him to the curb and replace him with somebody who knows what he's doing? Uh, it's it's hard because I kind of feel for him here because they've given him like they've basically given him roller skates and asked him to play ice hockey. Nice. This this team is horrifically bad. They gave him nothing to work with, but. I I would be very, very surprised if by the start of next season he has a job. I'm, I don't know if they were – I do fi- kind of feel like they will sack him before the season's over. But I think at the longest they give him until the end of the season. I don't think he's here by next season. And I think he's a little hard done by that. I give him – I give him until – I give until the end of June, because here's why. He has now had not one, but two different chances to make a a brand new team, basically, into what he wants to, what he wants to play. Or on the flip note, he has had two, two different times where he has had the opportunity to look at a team and develop a system around that team to be successful. He has failed both times. Just not good enough. When, uh, out of curiosity, what are these two times that he had a chance to build a team, basically? When he came in in 2021, he wasn't building the team from the ground up, but it was still relatively new where it didn't have a set expectation level, a set. This, this team absolutely had an expectation level coming in. No, it in. didn't. After this, the this was year, backed was by shot. David Beckham. They were getting linked with like Messi, Luka Modric. Yes, they I can. I could say any any player in the world is linked to Everton. That doesn't mean we're staying up. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you have no expectations. It's not like it's not like Barnsley's getting linked to like 
I don't know, Mbappe, you know? This was this was the team that Euro snobs loved because they were getting linked with all the old Europeans and they thought they're going to run the league. I had a buddy of mine who has tur- come, you know, put his hand up and, and called him out and not called himself out, but realized that he was wrong. He he told me that he thought Iguain was going to score 30 goals in half a season when he first came here. And I told him he was out of his mind and he came back. He was like, yeah, I didn't realize he'd be as, you know, he wouldn't fit in the way he did. I'm like, get it. But this is what everybody thought. This this team was made to just take every <laughs> Euro snob was, in the world. It was made to defeat Euro snobism. <laughs> no, it was made to to fuel it. This was supposed to be the well, team that's that what they take... that's what they were expecting, but in reality, they right? No, Euro absolutely. Snobism. But this was a team that's supposed to take every old, washed up European player as they tried to do. Have it be successful, and then Euro snobs sit there and go, "Oh, I told you," and it failed <laughs> miserably. So, big ups Inter Miami for canceling Euro snobism by being absolutely awful. Now to fix it, stop signing thirty-two-year-old English players who don't know what to do. They can't. They can't. They're addictive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's next, but it's somebody. <laughs> Find an identity, build around the identity, get results. But you need to find out what your identity is first. I mean, the the work rate of this team is so bad. And we mentioned this before, so you can go watch it. Well, I mean, look at your motivation when your two big signings are Gonzalo Iguain and Blaise Matuidi, two guys who don't care at all. Well, Blaise Matuidi isn't even on the team anymore. I know, but I'm just talking about from the beginning. Like, why would there be any motivation to work hard when your two highest paid players don't care at all? I'd really be interested in this is an this is an off camera discussion, but um, what is their attendance like at games? Like, have people given up on them? I, I'd imagine it's probably still decent because I'm sure it's so nice there. Twenty twenty one MLS attendance. Here are both both season and week. 35 totals as of November 7th. I seen a 14th on here. Yeah. 13,000 people on average total games. And we can, we can dive into it a little bit later, but again, you know, they got a good, they got a real nice stadium. It's pretty, but when you don't feel like actually working you're never going to get your results so get a team that's willing to work for you set an identity of what you're going to be play to that identity build your roster over the next year to fit that identity call it a day yeah this this team absolutely their identity should have been go grab go get the tiago amadas go get these big name south american players use that david beckham draw because i feel like that would get so many people to be invested in this team especially in like that area like Miami I think is pretty like there's a there's a pretty like good South American influence on there or like Central American like bring in these guys I'm sure it would draw up so much buzz and you could absolutely pull the big name South Americans with someone like David Beckham at the helm I'm sure they know who that is and if they don't a quick Google search will figure it out (laughs) it worries me and this is going back to last week's episode it worries me that St. Louis is taking the European approach for the same reason that this Inter Miami team failed, but I think they're doing it a little bit different. But we could get into that at some point. Yeah, that's that's another episode completely. But.